I'm Chris May. And I'm Angela Russell. Next on CBS 3 Eyewitness News at 4, deadly rip currents threaten swimmers at the Jersey Shore. Now, a family clings to video shot just moments before their loved one is pulled under. We're live. Also, it is the magazine cover that has the nation buzzing today. It depicts Senator Barack Obama and his wife as terrorists. Jet setter no more. Bonnie of the so-called Bonnie and Clyde duo admits she's guilty in a bold identity theft scheme. And a family refuses to give up hope when their little boy is diagnosed with a terminal illness. How traveling 700 miles to Philadelphia saved his life. Kathy. Clouds, damp weather, and also a little bit of drizzle gives way to sunshine. And once it starts, it may not end for a while. It's all next on CBS 3 Eyewitness News at 4. Travel consideration provided by... Want to win the battle against stains? Fight them on the spot with new OxyClean Spray Away. The instant stain remover that sprays away stains anywhere stains can happen. Stain removal so good, it's like you never got them in the first place. New OxyClean Spray Away. Try it today. In the Insider.com Challenge, we asked, who's the celeb blocking her face with her purse? A sexy one from Miami guessed right. It's Liv Tyler. Now, tomorrow's quiz. Wearing sunglasses and covering his mouth, can you identify this sitcom star? For a clue, go to theinsider.com and give us your best guess. We'll have the answer on tomorrow's show. Tomorrow on The Insider, Lindsay Lohan's secret sister, day two. She signed it, Daddy, with... Tons of X's and O's. Michael Lowen's prison letters, the DNA results, broken promises. He said that he can put me in little parts of movies. Exclusive. I'm human, I make mistakes. One-on-one -on -one with Naomi Campbell. Are you the most misunderstood celebrity? <laughs> I wouldn't, I would not. And Brad and Angelina's twins today. Have Shiloh and the other kids met the babies? Tomorrow on The Insider. Here's what makes you an insider today. The week has only just begun, and you know what that means. Four more days of breaking star news. And you can count on us to bring you the latest Hollywood headlines as they happen. That's it for us. Good night from New York. Now, live, CBS 3 Eyewitness News at 4. They're a silent threat that you won't suspect until you're swept out to sea. Rip currents making it dangerous to swim down the shore. This is home video of three local men who got caught in a rip current. Only one of them was able to survive. What was a family video from a beautiful day at the beach became a horrifying record of what can go wrong in the water. Good afternoon, I'm Chris May. And I'm Angela Russell. The men were swimming in the ocean off Wildwood when the rough seas pulled them out. One was rescued, one made it to shore and later died. The other man is missing and presumed dead. The family is just stunned. CBS 3's Walt Hunter is live at the family home in Olney with more. Walt. You know, Angela, that is truly agonizing video for the Moore family as they wait behind me for some word of what became of Juan Moore. They look at that tape over and over again, wondering somehow if something had been different, that this tragedy, the riptide, sweeping away two of the three swimmers, somehow something could have been done to prevent it from happening. The video shows three friends rushing into the Wildwood surf. There are no signs of the deadly hidden rip currents that seconds later would begin sweeping them away. The swimmer on the left, Juan Moore, disappeared moments after the camera stopped rolling. His father still holding on to slim hope that somewhere, somehow, he's alive. I got hope that maybe my son is laying somewhere hurt and not dead. Uh, I have to think that way because I have to. Another of Mr. Moore's family members, the swimmer on the right, Ismael Lopez, did not survive despite CPR being performed as he was pulled from the ocean by rescuers. One went down right away, one got sucked down, and then my son he just floated away. Throughout the day, as they made funeral arrangements, members of all three swimmers' families gathered, including those of a man identified as Jason, the third swimmer in the middle, who made it out unhurt. Among the most urgent questions, why, if the riptides were so dangerous on Saturday, Weren't there signs or warnings posted along the beach telling people to stay out of the water? Well, then you should have had an official closing to say, we have riptide, you people cannot swim no more. 
Now, Wildwood officials say there were signs indicating that the beach is officially closed every day after lifeguards leave their stands and that no one was allowed in the water at the time that these swimmers were in around 7 o'clock at night. Meanwhile, Mr. Moore, other family members have left their home now. They're in Wildwood talking to officials and Mr. Moore waiting for word on what happened to his son. Live in Olney, Walt Hunter, CBS3 Eyewitness News. Okay, Walt, well, thank you very much. Well, swimmers uh, being dragged by strong rip currents into the Atlantic does remain a real threat along the Jersey Shore tonight. Experts say that being caught in a rip current like that is like being on a treadmill that you can't turn off. CBS3 New Jersey reporter Sydney Long is live in Wildwood now with that part of the story for us. Sid? Chris, eventually a rip current will let a swimmer go, and the goal at that point would be to swim parallel to shore before trying to swim inland to safety. The problem is most people panic before they get that chance. In New Jersey, most of the beaches do not use the flag system. Instead, lifeguards warn beachgoers of dangerous or extreme rip current conditions by using whistles and arm signals. We may start out the day by saying, keep your bathers at waist deep. That's a pretty extreme example of a rip current. This picture taken by the National Weather Service from the air is what lifeguards use to train for rescues. What beachgoers can look for is a funnel or gully or sand filtering to the surface as a warning. The rip current danger today is high as state police marine units continue surface patrols for missing swimmer Juan Moore. He and two others ran into the surf Saturday night at their own risk. Lifeguards were off duty. If the lifeguards aren't on duty, don't go in the water. Beach Patrol Captain Steve Sox knows what a rip current feels like. It feels like you're being pulled out to sea. It, it's scary. What happens first is the swimmer will try to fight the rip current, maybe panic, become distressed, and distress can turn into drowning. You visibly could notice it was rough, definitely. It's scary, I wouldn't let them go out. In Wildwood, the average number of weekend rescues is four. This weekend, there were 18. In Ocean City, the average is also four. There were 91 over the weekend. And in Brigantine, on average, lifeguards rescued 10, but rescued 80 this weekend. Only dangerous weather like hurricanes, not rip currents, force officials to close beaches altogether. And lifeguards here in Wildwood are on duty from 10 o'clock in the morning until 5.30 in the afternoon. The times are posted on all of their stands. And unlike years ago when their shift is over, lifeguards blow their whistle and they clear the water, reminding swimmers that lifeguards are no longer on duty and that any swimming now would be at their own risk. Live in Wildwood, Sydney Long, CBS 3 Eyewitness News. All right, Sydney, thanks. And, uh, you know, the threat of rip currents definitely isn't over. Meteorologist Kathy Orr is here to explain what's causing them and how you can stay safe if you're caught in one. And we were just talking about this last week, and here we are. You know, absolutely. Stand. Anytime you have a tropical storm or a hurricane offshore, all the lifeguards talk to the people on the beach. It's a very dangerous situation. We have an animation that shows just what to do if you are ever caught in this situation. You can see that channel of water that is going away from the shore. That is a rip current, and the lifeguards can see it from their benches. So that's why it's very important to stay close to them. It can pull you well out, possibly two to eight feet per second. You have to wait till it pulls you all the way out and stops, and then you can swim parallel to the shore and then ride the waves in. This is just a standard operation if you are ever caught in the rip current. You know that 80% of all the rescues down the shore are because of rip currents and their danger. A high risk today, possibly a moderate risk tomorrow. Take a look at what's causing this. Of course, we are talking about Tropical Storm Bertha, still over 700 miles away. It's top wind 70 miles an hour. It is moving north at seven. It is 40 miles east northeast of Bermuda, expected to move north, possibly as a hurricane. But the swells from this bringing additional wave action to our shores, and that is what is making the rip current danger worse over the past couple of days. Tomorrow, a moderate risk, and then as Bertha moves away, so will the dangers down the shore. More details on our local weather and the temperatures rising coming up a little bit later on in the broadcast. Chris, for now, we'll send it over to you. Okay, Kathy, thank you. Well, the Coast Guard has suspended its search for a man who's missing in the Delaware River. Sandro Ballantyne was swimming with a friend near the Tacone Palmyra Bridge on Sunday night. He disappeared under the water, apparently after getting caught in a strong current. The Coast Guard did search for that man by boat and by helicopter. That search, unfortunately, turned up nothing.
An experimental plane crashes in the front yard of a home in Camden County. This plane went down near Watson Town, near Freedom Road in Winslow Township last night. The pilot, Ron Miller, says that he was running low on fuel at the time. He tried to fly to the Berlin Camden County Airport, but simply didn't make it. His plane crashed through trees and hit telephone poles as well, but Miller walked away from the crash unhurt. His passenger, Lenora Layton, did suffer a few minor injuries. A police cruiser and another vehicle collide, sending two drivers to the hospital. Authorities say that the officer was called to a traffic stop when the crash happened at Broad and Master. One of those cars hopped the sidewalk and crashed right into the Freedom Theater. The driver of the car, a 27-year-old woman, is hospitalized and in stable condition. The officer is expected to be treated and released for minor injuries. Wall Street is reacting to new developments in the nation's growing mortgage crisis. The Fed has approved a plan to protect homeowners, and a rescue plan is also in the works for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. CBS reporter Alexis Christophorus is live at the New York Stock Exchange with more on this. Alexis. Well, Angela, Wall Street fell again today as concerns about the credit crisis outweighed that government rescue plan for mortgage lenders Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. After soaring triple digits in the first minutes of trading, the Dow finished down about 50 points. The collapse last week of the regional bank IndyMac now has investors asking who will be next. <laughs> The plan is designed to protect future borrowers from falling into the financial traps that have forced millions of Americans into foreclosure. The Federal Reserve's new rules say lenders can't issue a loan until they've seen proof of a borrower's income. And they stop lenders from penalizing customers who want to refinance or pay back their loans early. But investors need more than that to set aside concerns about the future of the economy. What everyone down here is looking for is guidance and leadership from Washington and it's been long overdue and we need some confidence built into this market. Wall Street started the day with a flash of optimism. The stock market was bolstered by the government's announcement of a new safety net for the mortgage industry. The plan aims to keep the pillars of the housing market from crumbling. Those pillars are Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, companies that buy mortgages from banks and then repackage them for investors. They have a hand in about half of all mortgages and guarantee those loans will be repaid. That's a heavy load to pull. Everyone realized, you know, that we're talking about huge numbers and they don't want our government taking over this $5 trillion of debt, what have you. With their AAA credit ratings, Freddie and Fannie have long been seen as a safe bet. But investors are now wondering if these cornerstones of the industry are in trouble, just how many other banks are in danger of going under. Now, homeowners whose mortgages are held by Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae should not be worried. The interest rate and principal on that loan will not change. Even if the lender was to collapse, that loan would now be backed by the government. Live at the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Alexis Christophorus, CBS3 Eyewitness News. Alexis, thank you. And you can get more on the rescue plan as well as the mortgage crisis on our website. The address, cbs3.com, where we're always on. Good Monday afternoon, everyone. Waiting for folks to come home. Not that bad at all on the major roadways. I think we're in prime time vacation season. A live look at the Schuylkill Expressway. Three cheers to the bus driver coming eastbound. No, I said no delays on the Schuylkill Expressway. Let's go to Delco, where we had some early delays this morning, all because of the weather. Folks heading up to the airport, no delays at all. Folks heading to the right here, heading down toward the Commodore Barry Bridge. To the maps we go, SEPTA in full swing. It's the busing operation, all part of the shutdown of the Market Frankfurt line between 69th and 40th until a week from today. Now the bus is heading westbound. I'll pick folks up on Walnut, eastbound along Chestnut, stopping along the same numbered streets as the Market Frankfurt line would typically use. Little twist, they're sending in non-stop buses that'll roll you from 69th to 40th non-stop and they're using Haverford Avenue. Let's go to our sensor maps. A couple of accidents uh, in the neighborhoods right here in Westchester, Route 3 as Stoneham Drive, a double bubble on the boulevard, uh, a disabled bus that is actually northbound at Red Lion and then an accident coming southbound at Comley Road. Chris and Angela, back over to you. All right, Bob, we'll see you shortly. Thank you. Coming up here on Eyewitness News, a high-speed police chase that comes to an abrupt halt when the suspect bails out and takes off on foot. And Bonnie admits she's guilty. Jocelyn Kirsch of the so-called Bonnie and Clyde duo is back in court. 
The doctor who delivered Brad and Angelina's twins speaks out about that birth. And buy a car without the hassle of haggling in the showroom. Three on Your Side has an easy way to shop and still get a good price. Stay with us, we'll be right back. You knew something was wrong, but the doctors just wouldn't listen. Now you're hurting for the rest of your life. Rosenbaum and Associates, they'll fight for you. They really take care of their clients, and they know malpractice. It helps to have someone on your side. If you've suffered from malpractice, you need a qualified attorney, one who knows medicine and the law. Experience, resources, skill. Rosenbaum and Associates, dedicated to helping malpractice victims. Call 1-800-7-LEGAL-7. Get in touch with your inner shark now with nine new species, three shark rays, and four new interactive exhibits, including a virtual shark cage. You'll connect with sharks like never before. Adventure Aquarium on the Camden waterfront. You're in their world now. Make room for savings at Raymore and Flanagan. Save $50 on Sealy Posturepedic Pillow Top Queen Mattress Sets, starting at $6.99. Save $100 on our best-selling Sealy Posturepedic Firm or Plush Queen Sets, only $5.99. With free next-day delivery, set up an old mattress removal. Get into Raymore and Flanagan for the guaranteed lowest prices on Sealy, Stearns & Foster, and Tempur-Pedic mattresses today. Now more than ever, you want to get the most for your money. Look no further than the 2008 midsize Kia Optima. 31 MPG, five-star safety rated, backed by an industry-leading warranty, and it's priced about $3,000 less than a Toyota Camry SE. Or to put it another way, three years worth of electric bills, less. The Kia model year-end event. It's money well saved. Now get 0% APR or up to 3,000 cash back on the 2008 Optima. CBS 3 Eyewitness News, live in HD. I take a look at this wild ride just outside L.A. Police say a pair of burglary suspects led them on a chase that snaked along a freeway and a neighboring street. One man got out of the car and took off running. Police eventually caught up to him. The other suspect is still missing. Back at home now, one half of the so-called Bonnie and Clyde duo could be behind bars for a very long time. Jocelyn Kirsch briefly left her jail cell to plead guilty to identity theft charges in court today. She now faces up to 69 years in federal prison. More now from CBS 3's Liz Kepner. Instead of graduating and looking for a job, Jocelyn Kirsch is instead looking at jail time. The 22-year-old former Drexel student pleaded guilty in federal court Monday to six counts of conspiracy, identity theft, fraud, and money laundering. She, along with ex-boyfriend Edward Anderton, are charged with stealing over $120,000 from 16 people in order to fund a lavish lifestyle. She's remorseful for what she did. She knows she's damaged her life. Um, you're talking about a girl that should be graduating college right now. She's 22 years old and she's looking at years in prison. Kirsch's parents left the courthouse without speaking to reporters. Their daughter told the judge today she's being treated for mental illness. She and Anderton, who pled guilty in June and is looking at a minimum of five years in federal prison, will also be required to pay back the thousands they stole from friends and acquaintances. Restitution is mandatory under the federal laws, so she will be required, as will her co-defendant, to pay back all of the money uh, that was generated in this scheme to all of the victims. Jocelyn Kirsch's next court appearance will be October 17th. That's when she'll be sentenced. She could face a mandatory minimum of two years in prison. Outside the federal courthouse, Liz Kepner, CBS 3 Eyewitness News. <laughs> Most of us have spent time surfing online for a new car, gathering information before we head out to the actual dealership to continue our search. But there's an alternative. As Three Your Side's Jim O'Donovan reports, a growing number of buyers are keeping it parked on the internet. Hi, Jim. Good afternoon, Angela. That's right. It is a trend that's putting the brakes on traditional car buying pressures. <laughs> Ashley Marshall found a new way to buy a new car without the haggling and pressure tactics she felt in the past. She just went online, right to a dealership website. 
they had a little online basket and all of a sudden I was doing all my research and putting cars in the basket. The dealer's site used special software that let her pick a vehicle, negotiate a firm price, and even offered options to secure financing, trade in her old car, and buy extras like an extended warranty, all without ever leaving home. A growing number of dealerships are offering the option. These software programs will walk you through the purchase from start to finish. Software developer Brian Hawk says the only time you have to venture out is to pick up your new vehicle. People love to buy, they just hate to be sold. This is just meant to help them with that. And the new sales software is especially popular with women. It tends to appeal to more female shoppers and uh, I think it's because they do a better job of shopping. They're a little more savvy. Ashley says it made all the difference for her. After having so many bad experiences at car dealerships, I was very wary. So once I got in, it was a great experience. Now, if a dealership near you doesn't offer this software yet, check a dealer in another area. Just be sure to follow the proper regulations. Different states have different requirements as far as what uh, it re is required as far as handing over a car for delivery. Meanwhile, switching gears, you may have seen on TV recently a commercial involving a class action lawsuit involving millions of consumers. It's a uh, regarding a class action lawsuit against TransUnion, one of the big three credit reporting firms. If you have had a loan, a student loan, a car, loan, a house loan, or at a credit card in the past 20 years, you may be eligible for up to nine months of credit monitoring service. As you can see, we have a shot of my blog there. Just go on to cbs3.com. Click on three on site for all the information. Angela, Chris, back to you. All right, Jim, thank you. Well, Brad and Angelina's twins are barely two days old, and their first photo has already started a bidding war. An unnamed U.S. magazine reportedly offered $11 million, but no word yet if the Jolie Pitt family has accepted. The twins were born Saturday at a hospital in southern France. Jolie's doctor says mom and the babies are doing great, but they'll be in the hospital for a few more days. She will stay for a few days, you know, we must wait. It's, uh, you know, in, in uh, Europe, in France, it's not like in the United States, where the patient is going back uh, at home after three days. So we can stay more, more day until everything is, really, is okay. Okay, so the names, you probably want to know. The newborn baby boy is named Knox, and I believe it, it looks like Leon, Leon but it could sure. be Leon, depending Leon. on. I've heard that rumor. Yeah. His twin sister is Vivian Marshalline. <laughs> Here's baby name trivia for you. Yeah. Marshalline is the name of Angelina Jolie's mother. Uh, mother. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Okay, very good. Nice yeah. names. I'm and how about this. this phenomenon of celebrity <laughs> baby photos? $11 million for those pictures? Oh, wow. Could you imagine? I could. <laughs> I could. Not I, I could imagine. <laughs> That's about it. Could you imagine another sunny day? Oh, that'd be nice. How's that? How about not one, two, three, maybe six or seven? Yes, the sun's going to break out of those clouds in the wake of the rain. Live Mega Doppler 3 taking us back in time in our time lapse mode, showing the rain 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m. Chris may ask me, Kathy, did it rain over the weekend? <laughs> yes, Chris. You were obviously sleeping in yes. this morning. The rain is gone, and now we are just looking at drying conditions. Our live neighborhood network shows us how much rain, well, not a lot, more rain through places like Berks County, the Lehigh Valley, Lancaster County, where we had up to an inch of rain in Boyertown. You can see Westchester, a lesser accumulation, a third of an inch. As you get toward Philadelphia, one to two tenths of an inch. Millville, hundredths of an inch and nothing measurable in Cape May. So the heaviest rain well to the north and west of the Philadelphia area. Let's take you outside and show you the sun breaking out. As you can see, some sunshine before sunset in Center City, Philadelphia, that will lead to a very pleasant day tomorrow. Right now, here's a look at our temperatures across the region. In Philadelphia, 80 degrees, Trenton 81, Atlantic City Inland 80. You can see on the board 73 degrees and the ocean water temperature slowly warming. We are up to 60 degrees, 80 degrees in Lancaster, 83 degrees in Reading. The rain showers have passed on by. You can see on our satellite radar combination. This is the past 12 hours. There is that cloud shield uh, all associated with a cold front. And as the clouds clear, this is our weather for tonight and tomorrow. Clearing skies, plenty of sunshine, very pleasant with lower humidity tomorrow. Lower humidity also Wednesday, but by Thursday, the heat pump returns, really feeling like summer. Heat and humidity 
for Wednesday into Thursday. And we are talking about temperatures back into the 90s. And here we go again. We'll be talking about our third heat wave of the summer season. Partly cloudy, clearing overnight. 62 to 66 will be the range in temperature for tomorrow. Mostly sunny and warmer, 84 to 88 degrees. Winds out of the northwest at 5 miles an hour. Northwesterly breezes coming from the Great Lakes in Canada. So drier air associated with this air mass. It won't be until later in the week the southerly winds bring up the southern humidity. Five-day forecast for you on Wednesday going for 88 degrees, 82 at the beach. Thursday, 92 as ore returns to the shore. Friday will go 93. Saturday, our official third heat wave, the high 92 and down the shore talking about 86 degrees. Now when you talk about 90 degree days, usually we have 10 or more 90 degree days in the month of July. So far, we have only had two. Hmm. So we are due. About halfway down, so we'll see how we do the rest of the month, I guess. And where's the shore trip this weekend? The shore trip this, this week, week, we think we're going south. South. To Cape May. Oh, to we'll an undisclosed you know. location? Yes. Start campaigning we're mysterious now. mysterious. <laughs> All right, Kathy. <laughs> Thank you. Still ahead here on Eyewitness News, the magazine cover that is stirring up controversy. The illustration depicts Barack Obama dressed as a Muslim and his wife as a terrorist. And she didn't win, but Miss America certainly stole the show at the Miss Universe pageant. The U.S. hopeful trips and falls for the second year in a row. Easily. All right, Chase Utley is in New York. Yankee Stadium set to represent Philadelphia in the home run derby tonight. It's the All-Star break. Chase offers his thoughts on tonight's derby coming up in sports. Real-time traffic sponsored by Amorosos. Serve the rolls that make Philly sandwiches world famous. We have the largest cardiac rhythm management team in this entire region and, and one of the largest in the country. One of the things that makes Lankanaw highly unique is that we have a basic research institute on our campus where we can discover new things in the laboratory and bring that therapy to our patients very quickly. The quality of patient care and the outcomes make the difference. Help yourself to a rewarding career helping others. There are a variety of in-demand healthcare training programs that can help you get started in a new career. Pick up the phone right now and call the number on your screen. Learn which career is best for you. Medical assistant, medical coding and billing, pharmacy technician or massage therapist. A rewarding healthcare career is only a phone call away. Call 800-994-6486 now for your free brochure. You're keeping some money in the bank. Good. That's step one on the road to happiness. But if that money is in a regular bank account, how fast is it growing? Want to speed things up? Put that money in an orange savings account from ING Direct. You learn high interest, your money will grow. And because you'll never pay a fee, It'll just keep growing. Don't just park your money somewhere. Grow it in an orange savings account. You're gonna love this. Big couple of days for baseball. The National League batting order for the All-Star Game is the best I've seen in print. Hanley Ramirez batting leadoff, followed by Chase Utley, Lance Berkman, Albert Pujols, Dennis Chipper Jones, Matt Holliday, to name a few of them. Game time, 8 p.m. tomorrow night from Yankees Stadium. The home run derby is tonight at 8, and Chase Utley has two advantages. The famous short right field sets up for lefties, and Ryan Howard won the derby two years ago, and he is serving as Utley's derby advisor. He, he told me to not to swing at every pitch. He said, you're going to be anxious. Um, try not to swing at every pitch. So I guess we'll see what happens. Now, Don Bell is in New York, and he will be with us live at 6 o'clock to talk all about it, set up the big home run derby. All right.
Right. Go chase. Big boppers are out there. Thanks, right. Beasley. Coming up in the next half hour, the controversial magazine cover that the Obama campaign calls tasteless and offensive. Reaction is just pouring into this tonight. A woman sexually assaulted and robbed during a violent home invasion. Now she's telling her terrifying story to help warn other women. Plus, some teenagers tell us the high price of gas is curbing their driving habits. I'm Robin Rieger in South Jersey, where we found some teenagers shopping at the mall for jobs. Good afternoon.